everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about the new movie, Sound of Freedom. I had seen a lot of previews for this movie and a lot of talk around the film, so I wanted to go check it out. The synopsis is as follows. After rescuing a boy from ruthless child traffickers, a federal agent learns the boy's sister is still a captive and decides to embark on a dangerous mission to save her. With time running out, he quits his job and journeys deep into the Colombian jungle, putting his life on the line to free her from a fate worse than death. So without further ado, let's get into the six things that make a movie great. One. The plot. Upon this movie's open, a man named Roberto takes his son and his daughter to who he believes is the talent agency for small children. When he comes back in the evening to pick them up, they're both gone and the agency is nowhere to be found. The movie then jumps to Agent Tim Ballard as he's in the middle of catching a pedophile in the act of selling child pornography or setting up a buyer for children. Through a series of connections, Ballard ends up finding Roberto's son and then makes it his mission to track down his daughter. First and foremost, this film is based on a true story. Agent Tim Ballard did some incredible things when it came to saving children, and much of what you see in the film is real. That being said, they changed something in the main plotline of this movie, but not to make it more interesting, to make it happier. This movie struggles with the same thing that Jesus Revolution did, which is its timeline. But this lack of established timeline causes the plot to be pretty choppy and have pacing issues at times. But there was a decent and intense storyline here, and the message they wanted to tell got across. So for me, plot gets a thumbs up. Two is family friendliness. Sound of Freedom is rated PG-13, and almost exclusively Exclusively, it catches its rating because of the source material that you're working with. There's very minimal profanity and very minimal action and violence. One of the most important things that this movie does, in my opinion, is it alludes to what's going on, but it doesn't show you what's going on. And when you're dealing with something like this, that's absolutely necessary, and they absolutely handled it in the best possible way. So huge props to this movie for doing that. It's important to have awareness when it comes to a topic like this, especially with how prevalent it is in today's world. But definitely check out this film before you take your kids to go see it. So use your discretion, but for me, family friendliness gets a 50-50. Three is acting the script. The acting performances in this movie were fine. I liked Jim Caviezel as an actor, and he did a good job in this one. I didn't see any Oscar-worthy performances in this movie, but they played their roles well. And the script of this movie was good as well. The lines were delivered well, it was convincing. There were a couple lines that were a little on the nose. They weren't cheesy, but they kind of felt manufactured instead of natural. But that only happened a couple times. Otherwise, they actually did a really good job with the acting and script of this movie. So for me, acting and script get a thumbs up. Four is character development. Again, this is another area that shares commonalities with Jesus Revolution. While you understand who each person is in this movie, Movie and what their drive is, there is very, very minimal character development in this entire movie. I thought for sure that Tim Ballard's character would be developed more than it was, but all the things that drive him to be as passionate about what he's doing as he is are not given much attention to. You see his family pop up on screen like two or three times and maybe deliver one or two lines, but it's pretty much a neglected point of this movie, and pretty much everyone else is just who they are because of what they're doing. I'd say the character of Vampiro actually got the most character development out of anyone, and that made me like his character the most out of all the characters in this movie. I don't know why plot and character development seem to be the two points that faith-based films are missing nowadays, but those are consistently the areas for improvement, including in this film. So for me, character development gets a thumbs down. Five is visuals and CGI. Now here's where I was surprised. The visuals and CGI in this movie are actually pretty good. If there is CGI, they do not use it a ton, so you can't really tell, but but all of the different angles and shots that they got with their cameras were comparable to secular films. I noticed that especially about this movie and it was one of the things I was looking for. Did it feel like a B-rated film? And the answer was no. The only gripe I had had to do with audio, and that's because the audio was lower than secular films normally have, and I think that's more of a quality of tech issue than it is anything else. But I was happily surprised that this area did as good as it did, so for me, visuals and CGI get a thumbs up. And six is rewatchability. Sound of Freedom is two hours and 15 minutes long, and unfortunately due to the choppy nature in which the story is told, it does feel like it's going on quite a bit longer than it needs to at times. I looked at an interview with Caviezel that they had, and he said, that they actually cut out a lot of the film because there was so much more than they could include. And while I believe that, I still think that they could have told this story a bit more congruently. There was a really solid storyline for this film, and I just think that the way they cut all the scenes together affected it in the, how long it felt. 
Even if this movie was just 15 minutes shorter, I think it would have flowed a lot better than it did. But other than that, this movie was intense at times and did a really good job of promoting awareness to what's going on in the world, which is what this film wanted to do. So while I wouldn't find myself watching this movie all the time just because the nature of the film is very dark and sad and disturbing, it is one that I think is worth re-watching. So for me, rewatchability gets a thumbs up. With all these areas considered, I have to give Sound of Freedom a 7.5 out of 10. This movie had a bit of a choppy plot that made it seem longer than it needed to be, and it really lacked character development that could have added a lot to this movie. But there were solid acting performances, it was visually comparable to secular films, it brought awareness to source material that is not talked enough about in our society. I think they did a very good job of handling this film, and there were only a couple things that they could have done to make it even better. It's a film I absolutely believe you should support and go see in theaters if you're interested. It's a pretty decent quality film and the message that they're portraying is very important for us to understand. So whether or not you go check it out in theaters, it's worth checking out, period. Thank you so much for watching. If you've seen Sound of Freedom, please let me know what you thought about in the comments below. As always, I appreciate your love and support and I'll catch you guys and gals in the next one.